In this discussion, we will be discussing the synchronous counters. So our focus is on the synchronous counters. And basically synchronous counters are counters where all the flip-flops are clocked at the same time using the same clock input signal. So if you have a series of flip-flops forming the counter, at least assuming, for example, we have three flip-flops forming our counter, each of them, as you have said, has got its own clock input signal and all of them would share a common clock signal. So, we would share a common clock input signal so that this is our clock input and all our flip-flops A, B, and C will be clocked at the same time using the same clock input signal, and this forms what we call the synchronous counters. The counters can either be up counters, so we can then have them as up counters, or we can have them as down counters. A good example of an up counter, a counter that counts from zero to nine upwards, and a down counter, a counter that counts from nine to zero, so counts downwards from nine to zero and so on. I will go through the process of design of synchronous counters, and I would take an example of a counter of a synchronous form. We design and simulate it so as to set to test our design. For example, Suppose we want to design a synchronous counter that counts from zero to seven and using the D flip-flop. So if we are to design a synchronous counter that counts from zero to seven using the D flip-flop, first of all, the design would involve the truth table. So we we'll need a truth table which is a table of what takes place in the count. The truth table would involve the following one. It would have what we call the previous state of each of the flip-flop, the next state of each of the flip-flop, and then the inputs, the inputs to the flip-flops. When we are designing a counter that counts from zero to seven, we will need three flip-flops. We can have the flip-flops as A, B, C. We'll have Q, A, Q, B, and Q, C to indicate the outputs of the flip-flops. So these are the previous outputs. Then you can have Q, A, Q, B, and Q, C to indicate the next outputs of the flip-flops. Then each of them would require an output, an input, sorry. Each of them would require an input. So being D flip-flops, we will need the input flop, uh, flip flop A, D, A. We will need D, B, and we will also need D, C. So our truth table will take form on the nature of that arrangement. So once we have the next, the previous, the next, and the input, then we populate the counts all the way from 0, 1, 2, up to 7 for our count, and then we determine the inputs, the relevant inputs, the flip-flops that will help us implement the count of zero to seven. To determine the inputs to the flip-flops, we'll be using the state flow diagram of the relevant flip-flop. In this case, we require the state, the state flow diagram of the D flip-flop. Remember for a D flip-flop, if you consider the states, so this is the zero state, this is the one state. You can have a flow of zero to zero, a flow of zero to one, a flow of one to zero, 
and a flow of one to one. For a zero to zero in a D flip flop, the input D should be zero. For a transition of zero to one, the input should be one. One to one, the input should be one. And one to zero, the input should be zero. So using the state flow diagram or the state transition diagram of the D flip flop and the previous next states of the flip flops, we will be able to generate the relevant inputs to the flip flops from which we can design our counter. Let's now do the truth table for our flip-flop or for our counter. So this will be our truth table. So in the previous state, I would have QA, QB, and QC. Then I'm counting zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I write them in binary form as zero, zero, zero. So this will be zero, 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 one, 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 then zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and then zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So these are the previous states of our flip-flops. Next, we need the next states. Again, we need the flip-flops QA output, QB and QC. So once we count to zero, the next count will be one, which is zero, zero, one. So we write it in binary form as zero, zero, one, then zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, then one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 and then back to zero, so zero, zero, zero. Next, we need the inputs to the flip-flops. So these are the inputs. So we need DA, we need DB and DC. And we use the state transition diagram of the D flip-flop. So we said in the state transition diagram of the D flip-flop, this is the transitions, sorry. So this is the transitions. So a transition of zero to zero, zero to one, one to one, and one to zero. So this would require the D to be zero, to be one, to be one, and to be zero. So we use this state transition diagram to fill in the values of the inputs DA, DB, and DC as follows. So for QA, so a transition of zero to zero would require the input to be zero, zero to zero, be zero, then zero to zero again will be zero, zero to one will be one, one to one would mean the input is one. Again, so this will be a one, then one to one will be a one, one to one will be a one, and one to zero will be a zero. Then for our DB, a transition, so we consider now the second column, DB, QB to QB. So a transition of zero to zero will be zero. Zero to one will give us one. One to one, one. One to zero, zero. Zero to zero, zero. Zero to one, one. One to one, one. And finally, one to zero, zero. Then lastly, we have zero to one, one, one to zero, zero, zero to one, one, one to zero, zero, then one, zero, 
one and then zero. So those are the, uh, the inputs to our flip-flops. Next, we use K-maps to obtain the reduced form of the inputs as follows. So we will use three inputs K-maps to determine the reduced form of the input. So I'll start with DA and for DA, I can use a three input K map. So this is my three input K map. So on this axis, I can have QA draw this better so that you can accommodate all the parameters. So this is the K map. So three input came up. And so here we can have QA and QB and here QC. So values of zero, one, then zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, and one, zero, sorry. We use the gray codes in our labels. So, we label this as one, one, and one, zero. So we have ones at zero, one, one. So zero, one, one is a one. Zero, one, one is a one. We have a one at one, zero, zero. One, zero, zero is a one. We have a one at one, one, zero. We have a one there. And we have a one at one, We have zero one 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 zero zero one zero one one zero one is the one. So those are the ones that we have. Then we can form the groups. So I can form a group here. And form a group of ones here. So that my Sorry, it's supposed to be DA. My DA will be given by, so when you group these two, it will give us QA, QC bar, or that's QA, QC bar. Then we can group these two, we can group these two form an output which value is q a q b bar or the last one there's nothing else to group so that means we'll form q a bar q b q c that's the first term we can have another truth table or k map for our D, B, if our D, B, we can have this K map. So this is zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero, one. So we have a one at zero, zero, one. So this is one, at zero zero one this is a one we have a one at zero one zero have a one there we have a one at one zero one one zero one here and we have a one at one one zero one one zero is this point so we form the groups so the first group can be between these two and then we can group this one, sorry, and this one. So we had a one here. So we are grouping that one with this one, from which the output will be B, B is equals to, when you group these two, we will get Q, B, Q, C bar, or then these two, will give us QB bar, 
QC. In this condition is the XOR, which means you can write this as QB, XOR, QC. Finally, for our last uh, term, we can have another K map. We can draw it here. We can have our last K map here. This is our K map. See zero, 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 one, 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 zero. This is zero, one. Of course, this is QC. This is QA and QB. QA and QB. So for DC, we have a one at zero, zero, zero. That's a one. We have a one we have this one at zero one zero zero one zero. We have it as one zero zero and we have this one at one one zero. Those are the ones which if you were to group you would group all of them into a group of four ones that from which we notice that our DC will be equal to QC bar. So those are the inputs to the flip flops from where we proceed to draw our circuit as follows. So we we'll need three flip-flops of D type. So these are the three flip-flops. Okay, so we for that. These are the three flip-flops. I need to drop them down a little bit. So these are the flip-flops. So this is D A, this is Q A and Q A bar, D B, Q B and Q B bar, finally D C, Q C and Q C bar. All of them will have a clock signal. We have a clock signals. We can interconnect all of them to a common clock signal being a counter that is of synchronous form. So this is our clock input connection. Next, we need the input DC, which will be QC bar. So we tap QC bar and we connect it as our input to DC like that. Then DB is QB XOR C. So we need an XOR gate and have an XOR gate here. So this is my XOR gate. The output of the XOR goes to DB and the inputs of the XOR is QB and QC. So these are the inputs to the XOR gate. Next, we need three AND gates. So I will need three AND gates. We can have three AND gates. The first one are two input AND gates. A bit better. We need 
to input and gate as the first one. Second one. Third one, the output of these are connected to our gate, so you can have a more gate that takes in the outputs of those three, and then the input gets to DA. The input to the first one is QA, QC bar. So sorry, we'll make this correction here. This is supposed to come from QC and not QC bar. It's supposed to come from here. Then QA, that's our QA, and QC bar. So this goes all the way to QC bar. As the connection, the one is QA QB bar. So again, this is QA, then QB bar. So this is supposed to go all the way to QB bar. So you can have this connection to QB bar. Lastly, we have QA bar. So QA bar, this one. So this output. Then that goes to QB. So I take this to QB. This is QB. And then this goes to QC. This is QC, and that is our circuit. So this one will be our clock input, which is common to all of them. And that would be our synchronous counter that counts from zero to seven. Let's attempt to simulate these in Proteas. We can simulate these in Proteas as follows. We'll need three flip-flops of D type. So flip-flops, D flip-flops. Okay, the D flip-flop, I can check this one as the D flip-flop. So three of them. can enlarge a screen and position them skewed more towards the right like that so those are the three flops that we need next we need to connect a clock signal to all of them so a digital clock to all of them the clock inputs so the clock inputs, they share common clock input. Then the inputs to the flip-flops, so the first one is getting its input from the inverted output. So this one gets its input from D or Q, C bar. The other one requires an XOR gate, so we get a two input XOR gate, two input XOR. So this would serve us, place it here, and we can mirror this. So the inputs are from QB and QC, so I can tap this one, and I can tap C. I 
then the output goes to the input D. Next, we need some AND gates, two input AND gates, then type 7408, the two input AND gate. Okay, this is a two input AND gate. We need two of them. Then we need a three input AND gate. And so that's a three input AND gate. We can place it. Lastly, we need a three input OR gate. <clears throat> Then we can mirror. So we mirror all of them. So those are our gates. We can do the connections from the AND gates to the OR gate. So this one connected there. These are the inputs to the OR gate. And then the output of the OR gate becomes the input to the flip-flop. So we need the first one to come from QA. So we need QA and the other one to come from QC bar. So QC bar would require that you connect it there. Then the other one requires QA and QB bar. So QA and QB bar would require that connection. Lastly, we have QA bar. QA bar is that. And QB and QC. Those are the inputs. Next, we insert a display section. You can have the decoder. So this is our decoder. And then the display section. The seven segment display of common anode. We have that. We can do the connections. From the decoder to the display section, these are direct connections. We connect the common handle pin to a high. So connect that pin to five volts. We set that to five. We ground the most significant bit. Bit D of the decoder will be grounded. Then bit C goes to our first output. Bit B to the second output, that should be QB and bit A to QC. Okay, so those are our connections. A common clock signal, the X or gate 
three and gates and one or gate. And that is our circuit, which you can proceed to simulate. So you run the circuit. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to zero. And that is our that is the synchronous counter that comes from zero to seven using the D flip flop. Thank you so much. Next time we will discuss the synchronous counter that is not of mode two power n. Thank you.